How are you? Uh, good, yourself? Good, thank you. Now ah. just change back to E. Right. Um, I'm supposed to be on the list. At and the what's your name? Idris. With e an E? Yeah, E D R I S. So you're at F. At oh. the one over there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit of a problem, but alright. Came prepared, I love it. I did. So it's not your first rodeo? Yeah? No. <laughs> you got a credit and all that? Nope. <laughs> oh, you don't? No. If this yeah. dude won't let you win, I don't think. Alright, so I'm at a super rugby tournament, like it goes for all weekend, both men and women competing. And uh, I wasn't supposed to work here, but I got called at the last minute because they needed some of my, my lights. Hey! Man. Thank you very much. I'll see you in there. While I'm here, I'm gonna make the most of this situation and try out these VNDs. Is it working? That is, but it's so bright. Freewell sent me this beautiful VND kit. Actually, it's much more than that. There's variable in these, but there's also mist filters. There's circular polarizers. Uh, it's very much so an all-in-one sort of thing that I'm really impressed with so far, but I'm not gonna go through it um, right here, right now, because it's a bit complicated with everything going on. So let's go back to the office, break it down properly, and then we'll come back here and test it all out. So this is Freewell's versatile magnetic variable ND filter system. Freewell sent me this as a gift, but uh, unfortunately no money was exchanged. So I am more than happy to say what I want about it. And there is a lot to say because as cute and practical as this little package is, there are a lot of features packed into it. There's a two to five stops variable ND and a six to nine stops variable ND. And when you flip them over, you get a polarizer and an ND32 polarizer. But wait, there's more. You can choose to have a standard look with all of them using this VND base filter, or you can go for a much more cinematic finish with this mist base filter instead. But the coolest thing about this is that it's all magnetic. So if you've used ND filters before, you know how painful it is to screw them in and screw them off and switch every time. But uh, with this, the only part that you need to actually screw in is the base. And once that's in, um, every filter just attaches itself uh, very easily and you can flip them, rotate them, they hold on. And there's even a magnetic Lines cap. So just in case you're new to all this and you're completely lost right now, let me uh, explain each filter individually and tell you what they do. And then I'll go through the pros and cons, the price, and of course we'll go back to Amy Park and I'll show you how to properly use them in the field. <laughs> Okay, so ND filters are basically sunglasses for your lens. They limit the amount of light going into your lens so that you don't have to crank your shutter speed and your aperture way up when filming outside. Which is why with this filter on, I can have these nice blurry backgrounds behind me. And um, just for your sake, this is what it looks like without it. Not so great. <laughs> And also for your benefit, here's what it looks like with an ND filter on the left and what it looks like properly exposed but without an ND on the right. But here's the thing, a standard ND filter only blocks a very specific amount of light. So for example, these ones, this is a three stops and this is a five stops. But what a variable ND does is that it allows you to control exactly the amount of light that you want to let into your lens simply by turning it to the right or to the left. Each increment is called a stop for stop of light. And each stop of light is twice as dark as the previous one. 
So one stop lets in half of the light that you would have if there was no ND at all. Two stops lets in a quarter of the light. Three stops lets in an eighth and so on. A circular polarizer on the other hand has a different purpose. Its job is to cut out glare and reflection from glass and water surfaces. It's also very helpful when filming outdoors on a bright sunny day because the sky, even when you're properly exposed, has a tendency to look a bit more white than it would in, uh, in real life. So with a polarizer, um, basically the polarizer manipulates the, the saturation in your image and brings back that blue in the sky and makes it look a lot more natural. By the way, ND32 on this polarizer means that it has 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, five stops of light. So it's basically a five stop ND and a polarizer all in one. So the last filters I wanna to touch on are the base filters, um, both the standard and the mist version. One thing you should know is that they both include one stop of light. So if you remove the ND, uh, keep in mind that if the base is still on, you still have one stop of light in front of your lens. The other thing you should know is that you absolutely need a base filter in place for the variable NDs to work. But with the polarizer, on the other hand, the base filters are optional. Anyway, now that we know what everything does, I think it's time to get back to Amy Park and test it all in the field. The good thing is that we're at the perfect place at the perfect time to be testing these variable NDs because it's a very bright sunny day and uh, the way this stadium is built half of the field is in the shade and the other half is in the sun at this time of the day anyway so variable NDs are definitely a must. I think the footage looks really good, especially considering the difficult conditions I mentioned earlier with the action constantly jumping in and out of the shade. I basically had to keep my right hand on the VND ring at all times and adjust it live the same way I would adjust a focus ring if I was shooting in manual focus. From a technical standpoint, there isn't any noticeable loss of sharpness in my image. However, there can be some slight vignetting at times, but only if you are filming quite wide, which doesn't really happen much during a game, to be honest. And also, vignetting happens on every single VND known to man. So in comparison with other brands, this one really wasn't that bad. Another thing that all VNDs filter do is affect the color temperature of your image. And with the Freewell kit, there is a slight yellow tint, as you can see in this test, which wasn't done by me, by the way. But honestly, when filming sports in the sun, I guarantee you that you won't notice that tint at all. It's only in a controlled environment like this one that it stands out that much. And also, this can easily be fixed by doing a manual white balance on your camera once your filter is installed, or by doing some very basic color correction in post. By the way, you may have noticed that I didn't use the mist base filter at the rugby games. Well, I actually did try to use it, but my footage came out extremely weird, as you can see. I took the base out and put it back in a couple times and got the same result each time. So I decided to stop trying because the sun was going down and I didn't have time to troubleshoot. But since then, I've used it multiple times and the issue never came up again. Everything I shot with the mist base filter has been super clean since. And honestly, I really don't know how it happened the first time. Because to install the base filter, you need to line up the two Freewell logos together. And there's a very obvious sound and feel when you drop the filter in the right spot. So basically, I'm 99% sure this was caused by human error but I have no idea what the error was. 
As far as polarizers are concerned, it was actually my first time ever shooting with uh, circular polarizers and I think they're great for establishing shots. They're also probably very good for very wide shots where you're just slightly panning from left to right. But I don't think they're very useful for anything other than that sports videography wise. So bottom line, how much does it cost and is it worth it? Well, Freewell sells this kit for $3.99 US, which I know doesn't sound cheap, but keep in mind that no other company sells a kit as complete as this one, at the moment anyway. If you look at the individual prices from Freewell and their two main competitors, you'll see that you don't need to buy that many items from any of them before going over the $3.99 mark. So if you film outdoors a lot, whether you're a football or a soccer or a rugby videographer, to me, this is a no-brainer. The only company that makes slightly better VNDs than Freewell as far as image quality is concerned is Polar Pro, but they are way more expensive and not nearly as convenient as this magnetic kit. But that being said, if you don't have $400 right now, I do have a few tips for you that will help you get the best quality out of your camera for free. Simply click on the video up on your screen right now to find out how to turn a beginner's camera into a professional beast. 